Well, the thing about Howard Carter was that he was searching for this tomb for 14 years to oh. no avail, uh, searching through the Valley of the Kings, which had been dug out, and everyone who knew anything about Egyptology and archaeology had said, there's nothing there. Mm. But Carter was a sort of stubborn man and... and single-minded. Single-minded and tenacious, and he knew, it was, he knew it was there, and he pieced together bits of evidence from here and there and found it. And, of course, he needed the financial backing in order to do that. Yes, he did, and he had a friendship with a man called Lord Carnarvon, who funded his entire dig, uh, and it was an odd friendship. Uh, Carnarvon was a bit of a gambler, and he saw in Carter a real self-belief that I think he shared and decided to back him mm. uh, for the entire 14 years. So why was he, Carter, out of the loop? Because in the 1920s, Egyptology, the finding of, of uh, Egyptian artefacts was massively fashionable. How did he find himself out of the, of the group? Well, Egyptology, it was a sort of upper-class pursuit. It was incredibly fashionable, and people from France, from, from America, from England would, would fly out there, they'd bring their wife and kids, and they'd build these enormous hotels in the middle of the desert with every sort of modern comfort. And then in the afternoon, the men would go out and, and dig around in the sand. But Carter had sort of learnt on the job with various people. Uh, he didn't have a formal education, he didn't have a formal training in Egyptology, and he learnt very much, uh, you know, with his hands in the sand, so to speak. Uh, and because of that, he was outside of the, the circle. He, was, he wasn't considered sound, he didn't do things the done way. But it allowed him to develop a, a more forensic, a more scientific approach, which wasn't, at that point, used by others which allowed him to achieve the things he achieved. And how much did you know of the story yourself? Nothing. Really? I mean, I mean I, the thing that... When I first read the script, uh, it read to me like an adventure book that you'd read when you were a kid. Yeah. I mean, we're all familiar with that sort of gold and Tutankhamun um, burial mask. And it just... It, it excited the same parts of my brain as that did when I was a kid. Mm. Because the story was an incredible adventure. Um, I mean, the notion of discovering something that for thousands of years has been mm. left dormant under the sand, containing jewels and wonder like you've never seen. Well, it's amazing, because it, it perpetuates to this day. We're still fascinated. I think it was back in March that um, archaeologists said that there was a possibility that behind Tutankhamun's tomb the, there were two other chambers. One of what them could have been Nefertiti. Nefertiti, yeah. And then in May, hopes a dash saying, oh, we've had a proper look and we don't think there's anything there and at now, all. But they even, just scan it. Even, even now, yeah. Yeah, we, just, we, we desperately want to find treasure. I know. And, and the other amazing thing was that all the other burial chambers were looted thousands of years before the likes of Carter were there. So the notion of there being an intact royal tomb, it was, you know, it was a myth, it was a joke. No one would take anyone seriously for saying that sort of thing. But Carter believed it. How did you recreate it in Namibia? Well, we were in the middle of the desert. I'm, ne I'm never going back, frankly. It was, it was the worst. Jumping spiders, which... Who taught spiders to jump? <laughs> to jump on you. You approach them, you think they'd jump away. But no, <laughs> you would. I mean, what is the point of that? <laughs> And then, and then, you know, I think the mark of a man is admitting your own fears and, uh, yep. amongst other qualities, and one of my fears is jumping spiders. Yeah. So, <laughs> I feel You're not this, on your own that's with that it, one. never going back. And and so it was tough. I mean, the, the, the shooting regime Well, on tough. our first day, seven people fainted. Oh, God. So, yeah, it was a little tough. But the, uh, the set is incredibly realistic. You said that when the, the holes were drilled, you could see the recreation of the treasures on the other well, side. Well, yeah, we had an incredible set designer who built the entire uh, dig, the, the entire trench network in the desert, but then also we, we, we converted a, an abandoned football stadium in Cape Town in South Africa into, into the, the inside of the tomb. Mm. So it was, it was... Do you also look at the... Because another part of the story was the bad luck mm. that, that, that followed. Do you look at that as well? I mean, our story ended before that. Right. Uh, oh, that's oh, good. No, so that's you go back and do some more then. There, there you go. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I think... Uh, no, that, I, that, that didn't get my imagination, to be honest with you. Yeah. 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 And, and I... how soon after filming did you shave the moustache off? Immediately. <laughs> did you? Immediately. It was impressive there. Is that all your own? Don't get me on that. It. it took me f three months to, to get to that position. It's very good. I'm a 31-year-old man. It, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I, I, <yeah. laughs>
And people treat you differently when you have a moustache. In what way? How do they treat you? <laughs> they just, I don't know, I don't know. But safe to say yes. No, they do. How do they treat no, you differently? They, with more respect. Do they? They, they look at you as a, as a wise, travelled... <laughs> It's nonsense. But no. you were glad to get it off. They just they just look at it very quickly and then back at your eyes. Mm. And yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, it came off immediately. <laughs> and it was, but it was all yours? Well, we had to... So we span 30 years, so I had to age up and down. So the, the, the easiest way for us to do it was just to add a bit more body into the moustache. So the early days, it's all me, and then as it goes on... Uh, Slightly less. For more of the same, just click here and don't forget you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. You have to take your clothes off. No! Well, that's lucky. <laughs> I know, I don't know. Because, to because the, 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 I suppose to paint a picture of, of this man and his excesses... Um, is he would have his clothes off most of the time, you'd think. Yeah. Yeah, we see bits of that, I suppose, and we see uh, we see there's one. Uh, he the king commissions him to write something, gives him a chance to show show his true talents, and he comes up with this. His one play that he wrote was extraordinarily um, dirty, oh, and then we get to see a bit of that. 